I've had a love-hate relationship with Battle Royales. I never fell hard into Fortnite, it's why you don't see a lot of Fortnite content on this channel. I played quite a bit of PUBG and quite a bit of Apex Legends, and I actually quite enjoyed Apex Legends for some time after its launch. But I never really loved Blackout. I liked it, I even said so in my review last year, but it wasn't something that hooked me and kept me playing for hundreds of hours. It wasn't that it had massive problems or that it was a bad game, it was just that it was a battle royale that didn't really sink its teeth into me in any meaningful way. So, when the rumors and the leaks about this new Call of Duty Battle Royale started trickling their way online, I was trepidatious. I was kind of excited because I think Modern Warfare is a pretty great game at times when it's not slapping you in the face with some of its issues, and I've enjoyed playing it since its release across both PC and console. But when the press release finally broke, the official announcement it was coming on the 10th, some of the information was a little bit confusing. 150 people, two different kinds of game modes, one's not really a Battle Royale, it's free to play, which is really, really a great decision, and then some of the weirder stuff kind of started coming out about the Gulag and score streaks, the teams of three, so I sat down for a couple hours, and here's what we're gonna do. Today you'll get a first impression of just Battle Royale, later this week you'll get a full review of both this and plunder, but for now I want to talk about what this is after a few hours of play. It starts with a huge, kind of amazing change. The Gulag as it stands today is the best thing to happen to Battle Royales in a long time. Sure, some Battle Royale purists may hate it, but I think it keeps the game super interesting for everybody. It keeps the game rewarding, it makes deaths feel less punishing, and even though it's not a novel idea, Call of Duty isn't the first person to think of 1v1 gameplay, it works really, really well here. So what is it? When you die in the Battle Royale mode, you have an opportunity to come back into the action, drop right back in like you're coming out of the plane, the way to do this is to win a 1v1 match. Now this is your typical 1v1 that's already in Call of Duty. It's great. Should you take the victory in a single round, you spawn back in. Should you not, you have to wait for someone to revive you at a store container. This takes a lot of the heat off of initial deaths. Yes, you can only go into Gulag once. You can't do it twice, but it keeps you playing for longer. It keeps you engaged after you die. And a lot of the times it keeps you in the match for substantially longer, which is important for a battle royale with a relatively low TTK, excluding armor. What's really awesome about this is that once you enter the Gulag, you may not be the first match, you may be in kind of a queue, and you can literally, like a gladiator arena, sit over top and watch other people's 1v1s as they try to get back into the main battle royale game. You can sit there and throw rocks, you can run around and see from different angles, it is awesome. It is one of the coolest things I have ever seen. It really feels like Gladiator. It actually makes dying and going to the Gulag an awesome, genuinely fun experience. And instead of sitting there and queuing you up and you waiting in line in a lobby or just spectating, you actually get to sit there and kind of engage with it. It's pretty cool. And you know other people are watching you, throwing rocks. I've even seen someone seem to identify one of the players during Gulag by throwing a rock at them and letting their location be known so that they weren't just hiding. It's really, really interesting. Interesting. And again, you win, you drop back in. Yeah, you kind of stuck without any weapons or anything. It's like an initial drop in, but it's a really cool way to keep you engaged and keep you in the action. And that kind of brings me to the second best thing I think about what Warzone offers. Call of Duty Warzone is a battle royale that kind of takes some of the less enjoyable parts of battle royales and tries to make them more engaging. It tries to create a more rewarding system of mechanics and a structure that keeps you happier when you're not actually engaged in combat. And I think it works really well. So here you're racking up money. Call of Duty has played with money in game modes forever. That's not particularly new. But with that money, you can go to containers, store containers, and you can buy things like score streaks, which you're seeing here. This is where you can buy revives for your teammates. You can buy a self revive so that when you're down, you can actually res yourself. And you can find cash pretty much everywhere. You can find it in crates, you can find it sitting around in stacks, some big, some small. And you can even purchase a loadout meaning that a big crate will drop out of the sky and in it you can pick your own loadouts, score streaks, the whole nine, which can really give you an advantage in something like Battle Royale over people that don't have that opportunity. But where this really finds its meat is in the contracts. So when you pick up a contract, you're given a set of tasks, right? Again, another thing that's not particularly new, secondary objectives, 
I can think of a million multiplayer games with them, but when you pick up one of these contracts, you have a task, right? So here I had to sit here and kind of capture this location. So um, other times you'll actually be hunted or you'll be the hunter and you have to go hunt down a specific player or team. Other times it's as simple as going and getting a certain amount of crates in one small area. But no matter what, they reward you with cash, sometimes weapons, things of that nature. And so there are things to do other than just engage with other players. And these contracts keep the moment to moment action where you're not engaged in combat really interesting. And more importantly, they create this sub gameplay that you'll find more in Plunder. But again, we'll get to that in a separate video that makes the entirety of the battle royale mode a lot more engaging you feel like you're being rewarded more often you're not just getting rewards for killing somebody you're not just getting rewards for wiping out a team you're also getting rewards for doing secondary things hunting a specific player or capturing a point or opening a specific amount of crates in a specific space these are things that make you feel like you're accomplishing something even if you're not a great shot or you're not playing well and that is something that a lot of other battle royales are missing when you're not engaged in combat, a lot of times it can be boring. You can feel like you're just searching for somebody or waiting for somebody to come to you. And Fortnite kind of does a good job of avoiding this with a building, but even that is more for defense and combat reasons. Yeah, you can use it for traversal, but most people don't. Now, we're going to get to some very serious problems with contracts in a minute, but first I want to continue to go over what's kind of great about this before we get to the problems. And there are some real problems. One thing Call of Duty does take from elsewhere is kind of the Apex Legends model, at least right now, of how you play the game. So you're dropping in in teams of three, regardless of how you queue. It feels less necessary here. Apex Legends kind of feels much more squad-based. And yes, in Call of Duty, it's really important in Warzone to play with your teammates. But because of TTK and because everybody is familiar with this multiplayer suite and these mechanics, it's also really easy to carry or even go solo. I played a good portion of this match totally separated from my team almost entirely and came in six for a point of reference. But with vehicles on the map and the multiplayer mechanics basically carrying right over from the traditional multiplayer, if you're playing as a squad, it really does feel rewarding here. And I can't quite put my finger on it, but it feels even more rewarding than Blackout, even if I can't identify quite why. You still have the vehicles, the helicopters, the ATVs, the trucks, and those are great for traversal. In fact, there was a time where I was going to die to the gas. I got stuck outside the circle. A teammate whipped around in a car and kind of saved me, which was kind of a really cool hero moment for him. But by retaining that multiplayer feel, by creating that squad and building this giant map, it really does feel like an extension of something that's already pretty great, which isn't really what Fortnite or Apex Legends or even PUBG is all of those games kind of foundationally are built on Battle Royale. Call of Duty isn't, right? So you have to take the mechanics that already exist and transplant them into Battle Royale. And this, unlike something like Battlefield 5's Firestorm, feels right. These mechanics feel like they sit well in this context, in this team of three with the vehicles and the giant map. And that really comes down to how the game plays. And it's the last good thing I want to talk about before we get to the bad. Call of Duty Warzone is a battle royale that plays mechanically spectacularly well. The FPS shooting that has been refined for over a decade is just as clean and precise and fun to play as it's ever been. Weapons feel wonderful. I think there are some problems with the weapon drops a little bit. There are far too many LMGs on this play field and all the weapons aren't super well balanced, but other than that, you're getting great Call of Duty gameplay in a battle royale setting, which arguably you already got with Blackout. Nothing's really changed here in that regard. However, there are some tiny tweaks that I think make this game a bit better than other places. Parachute control here and jumping out is actually really, really nice and feels a lot more realistic, which I don't know if that matters to a lot of people, but it's also giving you a bit more control, it feels like at times. You can actually stop your parachute at any time like any other game, but you can fall right on your face to your death. You can stop this thing basically wherever you want, redeploy wherever you want, and it's quick and precise, but it also feels weighty. It feels like there's some physics to this. You're not just kind of soaring through the air almost like a falcon and that kind of makes landing more of a precision game which I think is really nice instead of this thing you turn off your brain and do but I think I'd be remiss no matter how great Warzone has been so far and I'll talk more about plunder and everything else in the review later this week but you can't not talk about some of this game's problems because they are pretty bad right now even if the overall experience for me personally has been excellent so let's talk about those 
Now, some of these problems are due to kind of it being day one, ground floor, right? Even though at this day and age, you really should be launching your games in a completely working state. I don't want to excuse anybody here. These are things that people want to engage with right away as they should. Sure, you can argue this is a free game, but for a lot of people, they paid for Call of Duty. They've invested into this, especially the Battle Pass. There's money there, but that's really not the point. There are server issues here. It takes a long time to get into a match right now, as much as eight to 10 minutes on PC. And if you're playing with like a duo, it seems to be taking even longer, which to a certain extent makes a bit of sense. It varied. I got in as quickly as two minutes. I got in as quickly as one and a half at one point, but for the most part, sat around almost five to six minutes throughout my time with the game so far and while what's in the game i didn't have any server issues or anything they really have to tighten that up over the next few weeks right with a game like fortnite you finish your match and you're into another one in basically 60 seconds like it's really really quick that's kind of the way you want to be if you're a free-to-play battle royale i shouldn't spend as much time waiting in a queue or a lobby as i do actually playing the game that is a problem but that's a problem that's very solvable there are other issues that are just downright weird, right? Contracts right now are totally bugged out on PS4. I mean, totally bugged out to the point where engaging with them in the tutorial, that is mandatory, by the way. The Battle Royale tutorial requires you to pick up a contract. If you do that on console, it bugs out. It bugs out entirely. The game slows to about three to five FPS. You can't see anything. There are no cues on screen. The HUD goes away. It's awful. And the problem is, is that doesn't change once you get into Battle Royale. That contract problem still exists. I'm not the only person that's seen it. I played the game both on PC, you're seeing PC footage here, and PS4. I played it with my friend who was on PS4. In any time, it doesn't even have to be you that touches the contract. If I pick up a contract and my squad mate is on PS4, bugged out until the contract is completed. Once the contract is completed, the problem fixes itself. But for as long as the contract is active, the game is totally broken. It costs us many games. It might stop you from even getting through the tutorial, as some people are reporting on Twitter. It's a total mess. There are some other things that are problematic too. A lot of bugs and glitches here and there. While I didn't have any server problems, my player did freeze, like the whole match just froze like twice and I crashed out, which doesn't normally happen when I play Call of Duty, so I'm assuming it's the update. I've also had some hit registration issues. They seem to only be popping up in the gulag, but I can shoot somebody right in the chest and get absolutely no hit marker at all, no damage done, which is a little strange at times. It doesn't happen a lot, but it has happened a couple times. And the final thing I wanna talk about in terms of problems is something that is going to be opinionated. It's very subjective, but wow, shields are something else in this game. They seem to be relatively inconsistent with how much damage they eat too, which doesn't make any sense, obviously. But if I were to shoot somebody in the head, sometimes it registers the shield and only eats like a body shot worth of shield damage, it seems. A lot of other things too, like the shield is just maybe being a bit too strong right now, a bit too OP. They might need to be nerfed a little bit, just in my opinion. But those are more subjective things. The contract issue, some of the bugginess, the wait times, those are things that need to be worked out. They absolutely, however, did not not take away from my enjoyment of the game on PC. I actually think Warzone is off to a pretty good start. It needs some tweaks here and there. It probably needs some weapon balancing as well. I think the map is great. It's big. It's not as cool, I guess, or interesting, I think, as Blackout's map, but that had the distinct pleasure of basically being a combination of a bunch of Black Ops maps, which everybody's going to love anyways. But it's a great time right now. I'll play a lot more of it and then talk to you more about it in my full review later this week as well as Plunder, and we'll see how it holds up after just a couple of hours and then actually getting into it much more substantially. But anyways, now I want to know what you guys think as of today. Does Warzone sound awesome to you if you haven't hopped in? Does playing Call of Duty Warzone something that even interests you in the first place, right? Is a battle royale with Call of Duty mechanics something that's interesting to you? And if you've played it, or if you've seen it played, what do you think? What do you think about what you saw here? What do you think about what you played? Is it for you? Will it take you away from other battle royales? Let me know the answer to any of those questions down in the comments below. Let's have a real conversation. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you haven't yet done so, also press subscribe. Also, the little bell and it says subscribe button. It's actually really important. It actually just makes sure you're notified when I upload. So, subscribe and the little bell. And as always, on your screen right now, two more videos from this channel news, impressions, reviews, whatever they are, they're right there in front of you. So, you can click on either of those to stay here. And until next time, guys, I'm out.